What's going on guys, I'm Bill and welcome to Bill's How To. If you guys have a pop-up waste like this one here that doesn't seal the water in properly or is getting stuck on the way up or on the way down, stick around because I'm going to show you guys how to fix it. Let's do this. Alright guys, so the first thing you need to do is remove this cap off your pop-up waste. The way you remove this is by turning it anti-clockwise, so to the left, and you want to just simply get a good grip on that and turn it over to the left. If you're lucky, it's nice and loose, you'll be able to remove that. If not, what you need is a pair of rubber gloves. So your kitchen gloves work best because they're a bit thicker. Once again, put it over the top, get a good grip and turn that over to the left. Um, that's if you're lucky and this is already in the open position. If it's in the closed position and it's locked in this place or it's seized in this position, what you want to do, get your rubber gloves once again, put them straight over the top and you want to just put the pressure on that center cap and turn to the left. So if you put a bit of pressure down and turn to the left, you might get lucky and it'll pop up um, as you're trying to undo it. If not, it doesn't matter. So long as we've, we're turning that over to the left, we're going to actually undo this. So just keep turning it over to the left. These ones here are fairly thin gloves. If you have thicker gloves um, with a bit more grip, like your kitchen cleaning gloves, they work a lot better. So once again, once that's done, you can see there the lip's starting to come up. So now I can get a grip on that and remove it just like that. So if you have a problem with sealing water in your basin, it seems to be leaking. What you want to look at is the seal on this top cap here. So that white section all the way around is a rubber seal that seals in the water. You want to make sure that it's nice and clean. There's no built up grease or grime or whatever it is that goes down your basin. Make sure you clean that up nicely and then you want to inspect the seal. So make sure it's not dry or crack. If it is, then simply replace it and that'll fix your seal. So the next thing we're going to have a look at is this piston right here. This is what allows your pop-up waste to pop up and pop down nice and easy. However, in my case, it's a little bit tight. Um, so what we want to do is test it out first. You can press that down, check and make sure that it's coming up nice and smooth. It got stuck and again, so my one seems to be getting stuck sometimes, sometimes it comes up. If your one's in a stuck position, that's no problem. We're still going to be able to remove this piston in order to clean it up. So what we want to do, try and get that to pop up so I can show you guys. There's a flat section on the edge of the piston right here and also on the back. What we want to do is get a spanner or an adjustable wrench um, or even in my case just a pair of pliers. And what we're going to do is we're going to bite onto that piston, onto that flat section and we're going to turn that over to the left again, so anti-clockwise. Once you've broken that seal, you can then do it by hand. Turn that over all the way to the left and that's your piston guys. Now we can get this cleaned up. So this here is the piston guys. This is a section that we're actually going to service. Before you actually get out there and try and do it yourself, um, I wouldn't really recommend servicing these parts. They are replaceable so you can go out and buy this whole piston um, from most hardware stores. If you can't find a piston on its own, you can buy the whole pop-up waste for about $20. The only reason why I'm showing you guys how to service it or how to repair it um, for this video is simply because a viewer out there has asked me to do so. Um, so he's got a problem with this one that's stuck. So I'm going to show you guys how to pull this apart and how to clean it up. First thing we need to notice is there's a screw over here. That's what holds the piston in place. If you remove that screw first, what's going to happen is the spring that's inside is just going to pop everything out and you're going to more than likely lose it. So what you want to do, there's a ring on the top. We need to remove this ring first and then we're going to remove the back section of the piston and then that'll take off the tension so we can undo the screw. So let's get straight into it. First things first, we'll remove this ring. I'll try and keep a good view while I'm doing this. Um, so what we're going to do is just simply remove that ring. That ring is very, very easy to remove. It's got a little collar that the ring sits into. So all we want to do is just pop that up like this with a flathead screwdriver and that ring will come out just like that. So now we've got the ring, we'll put that on the side. Now what you'll see here is a little bent shaft. So we've got that little bent piece of metal. What you want to do, pop that out of position like this. Once that's out, you can then pull that out. So now that we've got this out, you'll notice that it's got one longer side than the other or one side will be bent. It's important to remember which side goes where. So the short side was on the inside, the long side was on the outside. So we're going to use a little screwdriver, undo that screw. Now you don't want to remove the screw completely. We don't want to have any more parts that might be lost. Once that's undone, you can then test it and see if that's got enough to pull it out. What we want to do, we're just going to put a little bit of tension down and then unscrew a little bit more and that should hopefully be enough to pop it out Oop. and that's the spring that I'm talking about 
So now we've got that. This is actually the ridge that that pin sits into and that's what allows it to go up and down. So um, Matthew, I think his name was, that actually asked this question, said that he'd been spraying WD-40 in here, um, or probably not even in here. I don't think you would have got up to this stage, but regardless, with the WD-40, um, it's good for most things. However, when it comes to water, I don't really like to use WD-40. It's good for cleaning up the area, but remembering that this is a section that gets a lot of water running through it, that WD-40 won't stand a chance. So if you use some sort of silicon, or um, in my case, what I'm going to use is just some general grease that I'll show you guys in a second. We're going to apply the grease in here, and that'll make sure that this all functions properly. So just so that you guys have a better understanding of what's happening inside, this little pin that was on the other side was lodged in there. And then the back side, which is this side here, that actually runs in these grooves. So as you'd lock it into position, that locks in like that, and then you pop it again, it moves its way back down. So that's what actually helps the piston lock up and lock down. Lock up, lock down. So in here you get a lot of built up of grime, and you can see that's got slight rusting already, um, which shouldn't really happen. Um, but like I said, it's got a bit of gunk in there, so we're going to clean that up with just a piece of tissue or a paper towel. So we just want to clean out that rubbish from inside. You can wash this section off, wash this section off as well, making sure not to lose your parts. So the next thing we're going to do is just use some grease. This is general purpose grease, so we can use it for anything. We just want to get a little bit on the fingers, and we're just going to apply that in there. So we don't want to put too much. That's even enough, what we've got there. And then we're just going to move that around, make sure it's getting into all those little moving parts. Then what we can do is we can get this pin and move that grease around. So making sure that grease is going to get into all the areas that's actually moving inside. And now we can see that slide so much better. So just test it out everywhere you go in there. And now we can put all this back together. So to put it back together, we're going to put everything back in reverse. Okay, we can see that little notch where the screw actually bites onto. So we're just going to make sure to line that up with the actual screw. Once we've got that in place, we can then hold it with your fingers like this and we want to tighten that screw back up. So once we've got that screw tightened up, now the piston should work back and forward. Next thing we want to do is put this little metal clip that was back in there, remembering which side went in first. So we've got the short side on the inside. What we want to do is push that piston together by hand and then you'll be able, able to actually see on the inside, hopefully you guys can see, as I push that in, you can see that section where the clip is going to ride into. So now that we've got that, push it together, squeeze that in place, and then we want to use that little screwdriver just to help line it back up into that hole. This is probably the most difficult part, a little bit fiddly. Now we've got that section in. We can put that ring straight back on top. Now that ring's on top, we can test out the piston and you can hear it click down, click back up and it's a lot smoother now. And that is how we service the piston on our pop-up waist. So now we can return this back in. So once again, to return it, everything back in reverse, turn that in, turn it to the right and then we're going to use our pliers, bite onto that flat side again, turn that over just nice and snug. Once that's done, we get our top cover for the pop-up waist. Spin that back on. Perfect. So there you have it guys, that is how you fix your pop-up waist and prevent it from getting stuck anymore. Like I said in the video, usually I don't service these pop-up waists, I'll just replace them. It's not even worth spending my time um, to try and fix it. So $20 I can get a new one and put it in, that's usually what I would suggest. But at the end of the day, this was for my subscribers and my viewers. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. If there's anything else you guys want to learn how to do, put it in the comment section below. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Bill. Thanks for watching Bill's Out Too.